This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHE Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Licensed Contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks is out this week. So we welcome back our buddy Timmy McClendon from AC Remedies. It's an open topic show, and uh, we're looking for your questions to get your projects completed around the house. You can join the conversation with us this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877- 672-7464 or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. How are you guys doing this morning, Pam? I'm awesome. I, um, I know we're going to be, Timmy's going to be, uh, he dominates the show when he comes in because yeah. he's so good. So I wanted to talk about my project that I did this weekend. Is and that the one we just saw? On yes, the fun- and I'm going to try to get that on our Inspect It Like a Girl Facebook page, but We took a deck, an old deck that Mm -hmm. you couldn't walk on. It was so rotten. (laughs) Right. And we took it apart, and we saved all the wood and used it to side this little cabin we've got out in the woods. Y'all, it looks so cool. You've got it horizontally slatted. And and the wood, of course, is it's all naturally weathered, mm-hmm. so it just looks as cool as it's going to look. Oh, it's awesome! And we trimmed it all out in a in a dark gray paint, uh-huh. so it kind of kicks. But it's just stunning. And the thing I wanted to mention to folks: two things. Number one, think about using what you've already got. This right. project cost us some sweat equity and a can of paint. Wow. And it looks unbelievable. Oh, no, no, no. It looks like it looks like a designer put it together. It, and it looks like you went out and bought weathered wood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you had to and, go buy that now. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, if you had to it's buy it. It's expensive. Mm, yeah. So keep that. I'm fortunate that I've got places I can store that. The other thing I wanted to mention was that we had a 13 year old down there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he was sitting around not doing anything, so I called him over, and I taught him how to use a miter saw Mm -hmm. and a nail gun. So now, when he's down at that location, down at at our country place, he can look at that backside wall and go, I did that. See, when I was 13, you would have had me a nail gun. I I was there. That would have sounded like fun. It is definitely fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a fun project, and we got just about everybody involved that was... But listen, you get around me, I'm going to get you involved. <laughs> right, you'll have a tool in your hand before it's over with. We, uh, 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 Timmy, what did you get into this weekend? Have you already been in attics? It, man, yes. This has been horrible. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it did get, you know, like last week, it, it stopped raining and got 1,000 degrees last week. It's finally got to right. calm down a little it bit did. this week. It did. We could tell it. We could tell it in the service calls. You know, I mean, whenever it gets brutal hot, that's uh-huh. when we're just like nonstop. That's really. when everybody I mean, starts calling. We did get a little bit of a break. I mean, it was it a, almost chilly yep. in the mornings. Yeah, we got, I think it was like 60-somethings in the morning. Oh, we started to get like the high 70s and mid-80s at the most. I mean, those are nice. You those got a little time nice. to kind of chill nice. out, calm down, especially over the weekend. You know, it was pretty good. Well, so, I was going to ask, during the season, when I say season, season i guess i mean ac season um do you do you you like work all the time during the season pretty much really (laughs) so it's it's, you know you whenever whenever it gets super super hot and we're talking about like mid 90s you know touching almost triple digits you know and super hot humidity nasty weather i mean you can expect this to stay very very steady and if you it's really how much do you want to work right do you want to keep it eight to five and say hey guys i'll get to you the next day or the next day and just book up the whole week in one day Uh or do you want to work you know these seven eight o'clock nine o'clock ten o'clock at night right make your money and then go home and crash for a couple hours one night i got home almost one o'clock you know it's horrible really i took my son with us man we went over put a fan motor on his other unit was low on freon had to wash both of them out it was horrible you know you didn't I'd be dang if I still didn't wake up at 5.30 the next morning and look at my phone because I try to turn it on silent now at night uh-huh. because it's stay ringing. 
And I'm like, there, there's four more calls right there, and I've already got the day booked up. So you got to try to figure out how to get through those the next day. That is unbelievable. It's horrible, man. It's horrible. You know, if I hired somebody, it would be a lot easier. But it's just I can't do it anymore. I like doing it myself. Get that customer contact, build a relationship type thing. You know, that's funny. We have uh, uh, Timmy's brother on the show every once in a while, Shane. And Shane's been uh, remodeling and building houses for, for years also. And Shane mm. can't let go of the hammer either. No. They can't. They just they need to put their hands on it. You know, that's a thing. That's my brother, man. I like that old school. Those are the folks I trust. Mm. Right. All right. Um, uh, let's go ahead and go to a phone call. We've got Andrews in Vicksburg and need to uh, change out a vent fan. What's going on, Andrew? Yes, mm-hmm. uh, sir. My house was built in 03, and um, I'm having to change out my vent fan to my bathroom. Uh, like, what's the easiest way to do it? Do I have to go into the attic? Or? Uh, your vent fan in your bathroom. Yes, ma'am. I think you could probably do that from the bottom and yeah. going up. Your your challenge is going to be to make sure that your vent pipe is connected. So you would probably have to disconnect that. It's spring-loaded on the bottom. Right. So that spring-loaded um, cover, you just would release that, and then you would have access to the fan itself. I think these things are normally like screwed into a ceiling joist yep. so, to hold it in place. The, the actual mm-hmm. metal frame is. <clears throat> we have to do it every once in like a while. Like the metal casing on the side, like like the screws be like sideways. Right. Yeah. 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 We we normally when we do it, like if it's a Bruin brand, you know, uh-huh. you can go to you know your big box store and buy one, and right. those parts are usually pretty universal. You can pop that fan out of there and pop the new one in, and put, put the new cover on it. But it's got to be that. Side same brand oh interesting okay. okay so you won't even have to get in the attic if you can go just buy you'll you'll take basically take that metal casing that's attached to your joists chunk that thing use the motor and use the new cover that's a great oh. idea mm. but just make sure pull that venting that connects on the back side of that i've seen people <laughs> change these things out and you have bad insulation that's going across the top of it oh, yeah. if you put that fan up in there and oh. don't and don't put that nope. vent in. You've just spent a lot of time accomplishing nothing. Yep. Right. <laughs> true. I had a regular roof before, and then I had a metal roof installed. So, like, should those fans be vented to, like, the sides of the house or to the air? No, you're fine. As long as your roof is vented, um, you know, and, and usually a metal roof has got venting at the top at the ridge. And as long as you've got venting, uh, if the roof is vented, or you've got air circulation from a soffit to a ridge vent, you should be able to vent that uh, bathroom fan right into the attic. Okay. Right. Shouldn't okay. be a problem. Oh, and uh, Andrew, while you're doing this, if if you are shopping for a new fan, you know, you can get them now with everything from lights to Bluetooth to whatever you want. Heaters. I'll do it with my daughters. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah, heaters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, heaters. And let me mention this for some of our listeners who may not live in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. If you are, we're going to say north of the Mason-Dixon line. <laughs> right. You need to vent it out. I mean, you need to vent it up to a a boot on the roof. Right. And the reason is because our temperatures are different. So you've got a lower dew point and cooler air. Well, if you put warm, moist air into a cool environment with a low um, humidity, you're going to start growing things in your attic. (laughs) Right. No doubt. Yeah. So here in Mississippi, we can vent them right into the attic. Okay. Let's keep going. Gwen's on the line, and Holly Springs has uh, hairs in the roof. Tell me about that, Gwen. Oh, hey. Um, yes, I have an aluminum roof, and it's that real thin aluminum. Uh-huh. And uh, these little, little tiny holes that have happened all of a sudden. Is that rust or what? There are little tiny holes in in the metal roof. Yes, they're just tiny. Are they are they in a pattern? Not really. Like, do they go about every twelve inches or anything like that? No, it's not. It's not like that. Are you under some trees? Yes. Yeah. You could be because the thing I heard you say was thin. <laughs> And that's the thing you have to think about, folks. When you're getting a metal roof, 
There, it's only going to last as long as the metal that it's made out of. And a thin metal is susceptible to limbs hitting it. And once you ding that and you break any type of a coating that's on it, you're going to start rusting. Isn't it zinc? Zinc coating on the... Yeah, yeah, should be. Yeah, it will start rusting. Once, yeah. you, once you break the... That coating, right? Once yeah. the coating is gone, it will. It's like so, a, if you've ever if you've ever seen a chain link fence, it's got a coating on it, and when the coating is scraped, that fence will start to rust. Mm-hmm. This is the same kind of thing. So if you're under like pine trees and you're getting pine cones that are falling and dinging that mm-hmm. metal, no, you, I'm, I'm mostly sweet gum ball and things like that. Well, there you go. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Sweet they, gum balls. yeah, they're like golf balls hitting the. No, they're 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 like uh, God's Legos. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> stepping on them, also. stepping on them. Listen, we used to play when I was a kid up in uh, Greenwood. My granddaddy had a um, fallout shelter, so you know because it was back during the Cuban Missile Crisis, right, right. and he had all those gumball, th- you know, those uh-huh. they were Sweet everywhere. Gum so we would have um, that fallout shelter went about. Eight feet up, and he just he built it, and then so it made this awesome hill. So we played King of the Hill, <laughs> all <laughs> right. And if you had gumballs in your hand, oh yeah, you won. You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. porcupine, <laughs> <Yeah>. ultimate, <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> um, you know what? We're gonna take a break real quick. We're gonna get back to all of this gumballs and all. Uh, it's time for us to take our first break. We want to hear from you. What's happening at your home? It's summer. We got our AC guy here, Timmy McClendon. Give us a call at 877 MPB Ring. That's 877 672 7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, professor of internal medicine and pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. On the original Southern Remedy, we answer questions about all aspects of your health and share some of the latest medical information in the news. You can listen to the show on Wednesdays at 11 on MPB Think Radio, or you can subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on your preferred podcasting app. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHE Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Timmy McClendon from AC Remedies. You can join the conversation this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. You know, today is June 1st. The official beginning of hurricane season is predicted to be above average. And why does that matter to us here on Fix It 101? Well, it's everything. The M- uh, MSBOC, Mississippi State Board of Contractors, and Attorney General Lynn Fritch are urging homeowners to beware of scams after storms. This this happens after every, every storm. storm. Every storm. And, and, you know, a comment was made <laughs> last week on this show that I thought was really interesting. Uh, Jeff mentioned that after a storm, if somebody comes to knock in with a clipboard— you should don't answer the start door skeptically. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. As Jeff and Pam said, don't answer the door. Don't answer the door. <laughs> just, just be very skeptical of folks uh, uh, contacting you about contract work before you're able to get a hold of of others. And always make sure to get more than one estimate, please, please. If someone calls and said we'd like to do roof work on your home, um, well. That shouldn't be the only person that gets to see your roof. Well, right. I, I mean, my first question is, where are you from? Right, right. Pearl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> All right, let's go to um, uh, Francis and Natchez. What's going on, Francis? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Got a question. I'm planning on erecting a 12 by 10 metal utility build in my backyard. Mm-hmm. A question. Uh, Fiber concrete, the concrete with the fiber, or the regular wire reinforced concrete, and how deep would you put the foot in? That's a Pam question. Well, I was going to say that's a Jeff question. All right. Um, we punt. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I recently had some 
um, are you going to do the work yourself or are you going to hire uh, the concrete contractor? I'm a DIY person. There okay. you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. Fiber is, is really, really good. And as far as holding up over time, not cracking near as bad. Mm-hmm. But I've heard a lot of people, you know, with bad foundations, it'll double up the uh, rebar. Right. You know, or even heavier rebar. But that's just something I don't know a whole lot about. Yeah. Whenever I do, um, on a DIY project like that, I'm going to do a lot of research. Kudos for you for calling, but you might need to call next week when Jeff is right. here. <laughs> yeah. well, the, only, the only bad thing I know about fiber is over time, rain starts washing off that top you know, you're just wear and tear on it. You'll mm-hmm. start seeing the fiber, you know, in the concrete. In the concrete. But he's going to, he's casing that thing in. He's doing a 12 by 10 little metal building right. on top okay. of it. So it shouldn't matter no, not. on something like that. Have you um, poured a foundation before, Francis? No. <laughs> oh, not really, no. You know, I concrete is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> And I have, I, I got real industrious one time and I was going to do that. And I bought the mixing box and, mm-hmm. you know, did the whole thing. And that was the last time I attempted that because yeah. it is hard work. And if there is an adequate access on something that big, that's about the size of the little patio mm-hmm. that I had poured in my backyard where I right. had taken out some decking um, because it was a low spot. Right. So I framed it all out myself, and then I hired the guys to come in and, and, pour. Pour, and pour it for me. Mm-hmm. And it took them – they were done in about two and a half hours, but they brought it in. They made sure that it was mixed well. They got it um, – because it's an art. Well, I was going to say, is. Francis, the, the big deal with – if you're going to be doing concrete, um, you know, this is it, – it, Pam says it's art. I'm going to throw chemistry in there with it. It's a big deal when you're trying to get the right mix. And if you don't get the right mix, what you could get is a is a less than uh, satisfactory product. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because uh, because if you mix concrete wrong, it could be really unstable. It's yeah. going to be a mess. Yeah. So I would actually recommend on even though I'm a big DIY person. Do, you could frame it out yourself. You could even do your rebar yourself. But I would hire somebody to come in and get that in there. And then you can DIY your mm-hmm. metal building. Well, uh, uh, what uh, I was doing was I was going to order the concrete from a, a cement uh, company here. Okay. A truck and bag almost right up to the site and dump it out. Okay. Right, but you've got to you've got to get in there, and um, you know you got to have the boots, and then you've got to get in there and make sure that it hits all the crevices, and then you've got to start um, making sure that you what, it, what I don't even know what it's called sweep it off. Yeah, you're basically doing yeah. leveling it out. I've, yeah. I've seen people do it, you know, like small things. You know, they'll take a uh, like a two by six or something like that mm-hmm. after they pour the concrete, put it on there, and just rake it, pull it and across. Yeah, it. that's yeah. right. You're getting it straight and flat, mm-hmm. but then you got to come back and you got to trial it to get that rock out of there, try to make it mm-hmm. nice and smooth. So yeah, it, it really depends on how how you want it to look. If you want it to look really good, you probably need to hire somebody. If you just don't really care the look of it, you know. I mean, have at it. Get it but you got to get those air pockets it. out. You don't yep, get yeah. those air pockets out. I think out. that's where the beats help. Uh-huh. When you're walking you got to walk around, time. and that there's there's some leg action right there. Mm, so right. you know, I've had knee surgery. I'm not doing that. Okay. <laughs> Francis, uh, give it your best shot. If you want a little bit more information, you can call next week. Jeff will be on, and I, he's poured bazillions of foundations, mm-hmm. so this is this would be easy. I, I'm very sorry about that. And if someone listening hears this and says, oh, no, I got that, just give us a call. Well, hey. if you've done a DIY on it, on something like this. Right. All right, Francis, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Let's keep going. Gwen's on the line in Holly Springs. What's going on, Gwen? Gwen? Uh, go ahead and turn down your radio, and you can just listen to us here. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Gwen? Yes? All right, uh, you're live on the air. Hello? All right, uh, hang on just a second. We, uh, we're going to come back to Gwen. Josh is on the line in Columbus. What's going on, Josh? Hey, um, I hope I can ask two quick questions. Sure. Um, one is about... Uh, weep holes and what you recommend uh, to keep pests out of them. And then the other is about uh, what filter you recommend for really old 
furnace units, really old um, fans. Okay, we're going to tag right. team this, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. What kind of filter? Uh, Merv 8 is usually a pretty normal filter. So I'm, I'm a pleated guy. I don't like the old hog hair green ones you buy, you know, at the big box stores. Um, okay. But it's, it's also, you know, how old I guess it might be and how weak that fan motor is so if, if you put too good of a filter in there you're going to slow too much air down and you're not going to yeah. get the circulation in the house that you needed but at the same time if you slow it down it will produce colder air because you're moving the air across the cool colder slower so it's going to pick up more heat exchange and it's also going to remove more humidity so it's, it might be one of those things you're just having to play with so what did you say at first okay. that you would recommend it's a Merv, a Merv 8. It's just a plated filter. The Merv ratings, we can get into the science of it, but Hang we don't on, have a, enough time. A Merv 8? <laughs> a Merv, a Merv in, 8. Yeah. Merv 8, not no. Murder Vape. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's that country hick boy's <laughs> <language. laughs> My wife can't even understand me half the time. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Josh. That help out? Well, he wants to know yeah. about oh, yeah. weep holes. Oh, yeah, weep the weep holes. holes. Yeah, what are you weep- going to do with that, Pam? Well, let's talk about weep holes, and the purpose of a weep hole is theoretically. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know what those are, I'm gonna they're tell at the you. bottom of your yeah. house. All right, check it. There should be about 18 to 24 inches in the brick um, mortar, mm-hmm. 18, and it's a little slat, and theoretically. It's supposed to allow air to come in, so because when your brick facade is put up, there's mm-hmm. about anywhere from a quarter to an inch of space right. between the house and that brick. Right. So theoretically, <laughs> it's supposed to allow the, the brick sweat. Mm-hmm. And so, especially here in Mississippi, we all sweat mm-hmm. in Mississippi. <laughs> so that brick is sweating on the backside when it rains. When we have a, if a, a drastic temperature change, you'll end up with this condensation on the back of it. And theoretically, that weep hole allows that moisture to weep out. Now... <laughs> If you've ever been on a new construction site and you've watched these guys putting this brick up, yeah, and with their there are cigarette butts and right <laughs> beer and, cans and beer cans, <laughs> right? And, you know, potato chip bags uh, back up in there. So it's it's really, you know, the, I would say there's probably enough mortar back behind that brick from them throwing it on top of the bricks. It probably falls back and covers the backside of the weep backside hole. Backside of the weep well. hole, anyway. So half so the time, your weep hole is really not even doing what it's, it's supposed not to doing do. anything. But if I were going to come in just to because let's say yours is working the way it's supposed to, I would use steel wool. Yeah, I've heard steel wool several times. And if the weep hole is about, I've seen these that are about the size of a penny. You know, the weep hole is just a little. And uh, on newer construction, a lot of times you see like a rope coming out of there on uh, some of the newer construction. There'll be a rope coming out of the little weep hole uh, towards the bottom of the bricks there. And uh, once that that's rots their, out or whatever. Yeah, that's their plumb line probably right. on getting the – making sure that the brick is straight. straight. Right. So, and, But do not – let me tell you what not to use. Don't use caulk. Don't use foam. <laughs> yeah, Any, anything that's going to plug the hole and yeah. not let it breathe. Yeah. that's what it's, it's that's supposed why, to breathe. Yeah. A lot of problem. A lot of times, too, people put flower beds up next to the house and they cover those weep holes mm-hmm. up. So when the flower bed starts holding water, water will get in the weep hole. The also. water will come in, and right. that's probably one of the calls that we get the most of, like during this rainy season, mm-hmm. because people will have. I call it a contained landscaping bed right in front of the house, right outside the dining room. Mm-hmm. See them all the time. They'll build the uh, gar- the carport, what am I trying to say? The driveway. Uh-huh. And they'll leave a landscaping bed that looks like a swimming pool in the front mm. yard. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now let's go in there and add mulch and let's, let's, let's put right. a few shrubs. And then we get a gully washer. And you're going to look down in the floor and your di- in your dining room is wet. And right. you want to know why. We pole. We pole. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So Timmy's got a good point. Make sure that, folks, and we'll go back to Jeff's thing. He's not here to talk about. You've got to have fall mm-hmm. away from the house. If you don't and the water gathers, it's going to go. Water just goes where water goes. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, Josh. I uh, hope that helps out. And, Can I uh, ask? Um, yeah. 
if, if you steal wool, do you need to change it every so often? I will. I mean, it's probably going to hold up for a pretty good while, yeah, but it will probably, eventually rust out, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't use the real thin kind. I would get something that's got a pretty rough texture to it. When you okay. talked about pests, were you talking about like ants, you know, mice, no, roaches? Mice, mice yeah. yeah, steel wool. And they, they'll do, yeah, steel wool will keep them out of yeah, there. Yeah, that's about the that's about the only thing. Yeah, uh, snakes. They'll they'll go around and you know they're going they're hugging the the siding. Right. So they're going to go in wherever they can. So right. a lot of times in new construction, those weeps are not even near the ground. Okay. They're up at the base of the foundation, and usually that concrete foundation is anywhere from twelve to eighteen inches above grade right. anyway. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that helps, Josh. We're going to keep on moving. Uh, You know what? Let's do a quick email here. I wanted to get to this, and and it sounded just like you, Pam. Uh Uh-oh. Sounds just like you. Okay. (laughs) Sophisticated. There's so many things that sound like (laughs) me. (laughs) Hi. We really want a hot tub, but the idea of all that humidity indoors is really depressing. So we're thinking about putting one outside in our backyard. What do we need to do uh, to do that? Thanks, Judy. So they're thinking about, I've seen this before, where someone takes, uh, you know, a jetted uh, big, you know, jacuzzi-type pool and puts it out back and has like a little deck thing made and all that jazz. Uh Uh-oh, Timmy? Just put one in. No way! I had a small one that me and my wife bought five, six years ago and uh, put it on the back porch. And then now we basically extended the back porch out and tore everything out and put another one back there. So, so, you're so gonna, you've got two? No, no, no. I got one. I sold the other one. And it, when you read that, it reminded We're me of the guy. We're all going to Timmy's house this yeah. weekend. It reminded me of the guy that bought mine because he wanted to put it in his house. And I told him, I was like, man, that is a lot of heat coming off of that thing. A lot of gravity. Mm, that so is a bad idea. He got under his house, reinforced. And this is a long story, but I'm going to cut uh-huh. it down. He lost the hot tub on the way to his house after he picked <gasps> it up from me. He had oh, to go no. back, backtrack. It slid right off the trailer. And uh, anyway, he gets home, he reinforces, you know, the up under the right. house, you know, there's a lot of water, you know, and uh, puts in a fan, mm-hmm. you know, on the side. It's an old house, you know, right. so he puts in almost like a commercial grade type. Exhaust uh, fan. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's just sucking it out of there. But you've got to have some air coming back in there. So you have to have some sort of a levered vent. Right. Whenever it pulls that negative pressure, you know, it's pulling air back right. in. If not, it's going to go. So. That is one thing about putting it inside. The outside of the park, not hard. You know, my porch is a little unlevel, you know, because it's a right. back porch. It's falling like it's supposed to. Right. But um, It's on concrete. It's on concrete. Yeah. Right. Definitely on concrete. So if you're going to come in and put it on a deck. Uh-huh. It needs reinforcement. Ooh, you need a lot of it. That son of a gun gets heavy. Because some of them are 7 foot by 7 foot. Right. Mm-hmm. And some of these things are 12 foot by 12 foot. So wow. You have that's to a lot of water. Gallons of the water. How much is going to weigh and make sure you do it correctly. Well, you've got to do. So there are a couple of things to think about. you got to think about your electricity. That was the hardest part. Uh-huh. Yeah. Think We're, about your power. How you're going to... Um, run this motor well, and this heater they've got two different ways you can do it one if you have a slot in your outside breaker box which i would recommend putting it on there um go with it's going to be a 50 amp gfi breaker mm-hmm. that you can run then your number whatever that thing calls for i think i ran number eight um over to a regular ac disconnect box because since the line's already you know gfi you don't have to have it there and then the hard line and then there make sure you use all the right connectors and all that stuff but Wow. They got another thing called a spa box that I couldn't find, and I barely found this breaker if it went for a good electrician buddy of mine that had one. But they got a spa box. You can run power from your breaker box over to the spa box, and the spa box itself is GFI'd. Nice. So that's an easier way to go. You can usually get them from your big box store. You know, oh, okay. But um, it, regular breaker on your panel, and then the spa box, and hook it up. Right. It's I usually would a number rec- eight wire. Yeah, and... D- I'm telling you, folks, if you're going to do something like this, it, you're really out of your league on a DIY on the wiring. I really recommend getting an electrician. electrician. Get yeah. an electrician to come in and get that thing wired because it, it, you could really, you mess that up, you could really have some problems. Well, yeah. think about any time you add electricity to a waterborne device, like a tub. Oh, um, no. you do need a pro. Well, you have to have. Uh, this is what I found out. You have to have a ground rod within ten foot mm-hmm. of that hot tub, even though you're 
burger box is grounded, right. you know, you still have a very long run getting right. there, mm-hmm. so it takes time to get there. Pool equipment, anything, yeah. like that anything out like that. And we do pool inspections. I was at, I did a pool inspection for a, at a home inspection last week. And they had a light in the pool on just a regular 20 amp break. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not swimming in that pool. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's take another break here. We're still looking to hear from you about your home improvement projects. Gwen and Holly Springs, we're going to be getting to you in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. And uh, you can get your question answer. If you just want to join today's show, give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. It's 877-672-7464 or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. From MPB Think Radio, you're listening to Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pivas, ASHE Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Timmy McClendon from AC Remedies. If you missed any of today's program, you can always listen back by podcast using any podcast app or our MPB public media app. Um, so we are here. We're talking about everything that everybody's calling in on. We were uh, talking to Gwen earlier in Holly Springs, and uh, she uh, was talking about the hairs in her roof. So I do want to talk with Gwen again. We talked with her once about the uh, gumballs. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Gwen, what's going on? Uh, well, I was calling earlier about the, my thin aluminum roof. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to ask you all, what is the remedy? Uh, I thought somebody said I could get some kind of oil-based paint to paint it? Well, once it's already got rusted holes, if there's rusted holes in it, uh, there might not be anything to do with that but to replace that panel, mm-hmm. that that one panel. That's not, it's more than one panel, and it just happened all of a sudden. Have you, have you, had, a, uh, have, have you had a roofer go out and look at that? No, I built the house myself. Uh, well, you know, I was going to ask if you, you know, if you have a roof that suddenly went wrong, maybe, maybe there might be a, some sort of insurance thing. Yeah, manufacturing defect. How old is the roof? I'm not sure. I think it, it might be. Um, let's see. It might be fairly old. I think it, I think it was in the old eight. Oh, eight? Yeah. Something's going on with the roof, I would imagine, then. Yeah, well, you're still, I mean, think about it. That's 13, 14 years. Yeah, yeah. So, it sounds to me, if you've got rust spots with holes, it may be time to replace. Yeah, and, and, and I like Jason's thought there. I would get a roofer out there that's familiar with this type of roof and have them take a look at it. If it's a manufacturer defect, you might be able to go back on the manufacturer. Mm-hmm. But when you say thin metal, you got to remember, and, and I tell people this all the time, if you're going to go with a metal roof, don't go with a cheap one. Yeah. Don't go with a thin one because you're going to run into what Gwen's running, running into. They just don't hold up. It might mm-hmm. be economical on the front end but you're going to end up paying more in the back end because right. the thicker that metal the more it's going to be able to handle right. debris um, you're not going to have and dings i guess we should always it. think about that especially if you're around trees yeah 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 nope. All right. All right, uh, Gwen, thanks a lot. I hope that helps out. Let's keep on moving. Uh, Paul, no, what? Fletch is on the line in Madison. What's going on, Fletch? Good morning. Good morning, sir. Well. Yes, uh, sir. <clears throat> I was just going to comment on the concrete cement uh, from Francis. Yes. Uh, my son works in concrete as a civil engineer in, in Dallas. Uh-huh. And I uh, learned, as he learned when he was an intern, as you said, uh, chemistry, uh-huh. I think that goes to where it's an art and a science because there are definitely temperature um, uh, gradients and algorithms and formulas as well as, I think, moisture 
Right. Oh, yes. As, is it going to be like uh, a parking deck and be suspended, or is it going to be a foundation? So if he's going to use the contractor uh, to pour it, even if he finishes it, I, he, he should at least know he's got the quality concrete that shouldn't be brittle and, uh, and, and fail. But then again, if it's not going to be huge weight-bearing, no, no house, no right. driveway, no, no car, yeah. ramp. Yeah, it, it may not be as big a problem, but if he's already right. planning on doing that, he's probably in the right, right, uh, right, right thought process. Well, I appreciate you saying that. It's it's real easy for any of us here to go to our local hardware store, pick up sixty pounds of powdered concrete, <laughs> take it home, <laughs> pour water on it, and then all of a sudden, That's not real bo- easy. right? <laughs> so it's it's a completely different process. Um, well, the operative word there is 60 pounds. Yeah, 60 pounds, yeah. <laughs> that uh, might be easy for Timmy, but Pammy ain't picking that up. <laughs> but really, when you when you buy concrete at your hardware store, that stuff is really made for you to uh, uh, hold fence posts and you know stuff like that. There, mm. There's a lot of applications for it, but... It, it, you're definitely not building a foundation with it. And I like I like what Fletch said too. He's and it's that drying process because it it dry, it's no no, gonna, no 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 hardening. Well, <laughs> it doesn't dry because you're getting the, as the water comes out. It's going to be different in July than it is uh, well, in May than no, it yeah. is in November. So you really have to look at what your ambient temperature is and how fast that thing's going to – because if oh. it dries too fast, right, it will crack. So the guy that looks like he just drives a truck may be a mathematician, so be careful when he comes out to pour your concrete. Well, it's got to come out of the truck at just the right time, That's too. Right. they got to right. turn it for so long before you like it comes uh, out. Wait a second. We're going to scare the heck out of people. No <laughs> one's ever going to buy concrete Well, again. look, I, I have a small project that I took on, you know, in my backyard. So uh-huh. i got a driveway coming off my neighbor's yard, you know, going up to my shop in my backyard. So the guy that used to live there before, I had a big, like, just my concrete broke and just fell. You know, right. I'm like a sinkhole, you know. So I'm like, man, why in the world are we doing this? Right. So I called the guy that put the concrete in, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, man, is there any way you can just come over here and just look at something real quick? He's like, yeah, man. He comes over there, and he's like, man, there used to be a tree right, right there. there. Oh, really? And then mm-hmm. all that... The all trees, that weight. Once they took it out, and it rotted, it rotted, root. and it sunk. You mm-hmm. know, so I went in there, man, yanked that broken concrete out. You know, uh-huh. I'm like, I'm pissing this port. So anyway, I start digging and digging and digging. As I dug, there was big air pockets in there where the wood had rotted. Uh huh. So I'm taking my shovel and just sticking it up under all the concrete, you know, and just getting all the dirt and mud and everything right. else out. So I went up there to the store and bought a ton of concrete, bro. <laughs> Put my- <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Thursday. sounds like a and horrible then, look, weekend. Then, this is this is me. You know, I used to be a tile guy. You know, right. so I mixed insect grout up all the time. You know, back uh-huh. way back when. So I still got my old mixer. I right. got some buckets. Uh-huh. Got a water hose. Right, right. right. Man, got everything. I can do it. I can do this. I'll right, right, right. my dugum truck up in there, man. Got my water hose out there. Two and a half hours later. I'm dying you know, from just <laughs> right. mixing up 40 bags of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> and, but this thing has a stinking foot in the you never believe. You know, just because right. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm just going to, like, literally dig the whole thing down as far as I can and get it. And fill it. And just fill it. Because, I mean, that's the way, you know, it's going to stay, you know. Yeah. Now I've got a 900-pound footin'. Right, you know that's saying? true. It's like they come nowhere. <laughs> and I was like, isn't that a little overkill? I'm like, no, yeah. it's not. You know, I'm mixing concrete. Right. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun. It is like one of the most fun materials you're buying. I don't know. Here. Timmy's got his kids in here this morning. They're just shaking their head. Right. They're like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Paul in Tupelo. What's going on, Paul? Hey, man. Hey. Uh, a whole lot. Head home. Yeah. <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, I got a comment about um, uh, do-it-yourselfers on the hot tub deal, uh, installing the ground rod. I got a pretty good tip for that. Okay. You can, um, take, and you put salt in the water, too, but you probably a bottle of water or two bottles and uh, just wet the ground a little bit and start that ground rod in, and you can put that thing by, in by hand. It is the easiest. Really? But, uh, oh, a lot, I've struggled before. I found out about it. You know, beating on them and, you know, till you're about dead. Right. Uh, you can literally do it by hand, and it is the easiest thing. Just by using a couple of cups of water in the ground? Uh, you know, like a bottle of water. Yeah. yeah. If you put salt in the water, I, I believe it makes it a, a, a more effective ground, too. 
All right. So what about you, Timmy? What do you think? You ever done Man, that? you know, being on the clay line that I live on. <laughs> uh, so you had, you had the eight-pound hammer oh, after this God, thing. Oh, man. Look, we, we got it about probably two, two and a half foot in the ground. You uh-huh. know? And then it, you know, yeah. They had to go get the old, you know, sledge and pound that joker yeah. in the ground. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know? so, yeah. You I know, mean, even this clay, it, it, it loosens it up, and you just keep adding a little bit of water as you go up and down with the rod. That's that's wild. I've okay, never... so so do you do you like pre treat the ground or you do it as you're doing it? As you're doing it. Okay. Okay. Or what you do? <clears throat> what I did, and I uh, uh, last week I have a friend who's putting in a swimming pool. Hey, he, he got on the list like 18 months ago. Uh-huh. So they showed up, and he was going to have to uh, pull out some landscaping, some ferns right. and gardenias, and said anybody want them. Well, you know that gully washer that we had last week? It was like mm-hmm. Wednesday there or something. Is. I said, I'll be there tomorrow. And I went over there with my shovel and just popped those things right no, out of yeah. the ground. They don't take after long. Rain. Uh, after that gully washer, it was just unbelievable. Right. And then I came back and digging my holes and putting those ferns and those gardenias in was nothing. Did you call 811 first? <laughs> call before you dig, Pam. Yeah, busted. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> all right. But That's I know good. where all my lines are, so right. I've been there 30 years. I can tell you where every line in that ground is. Oh, Number to call is 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Got, a, got an AC email here that I wanted to get to first. My AC went out. We were told uh, we need to replace the outside and inside part of the unit. Money was tight. Uh, we've been using window units since. Hate them. What size heat slash cool pump do I need? I have a 1,480 square foot house. What brand gives me the most bang for my buck? Thanks. Love your show. So, all right. So this person has right now window units, but wants to move to a, looks like a heat or a heat pump or something like that, uh, right at 1,500 square feet. Yeah, you know, whenever they start talking, you know, about square footage of houses, you know, it, it's a little bit different because whenever they give you square footage of houses, they're going either from brick or they're going from stud framing. Right. So if you count all the two by four walls you have inside your house, that is taking a lot of square footage out of there when we're talking about heating and cooling because we're not cooling the inside of your walls. We're cooling the actual space. Right. So hallways, we don't count. Um, if it's got a return, you know, right. type thing in there, closets, you know, if it's like a little four by four closet or something like that, when uh-huh. they've been in it, we don't count those because they're not conditioned, you know, and they're right. like ducking right. them. So you can take a 1,490 square foot house and it might only really have, you know, maybe 1,100, you know, heated and cooled square heated and feet cooled. in it. Yeah. So um, that's where you kind of got to pay attention. So anytime somebody says 1,400 square foot, first thing that pops in my mind, Probably, you know, probably a three ton, you know, something like that. Right. But it could also be a two and a half, you know, once we start getting down there to the, you know, 1,100 square foot right. part of it. Two and a half ton might be a little too much on a thousand square foot in this day and age because of the mm-hmm. way they build the houses, better insulation, better windows, right. more efficient units. So, you know, that's kind of a gray area you right. know, when you're talking about just square footage. Yeah, if it's an older house, you know, I had to think about that on mine. I've got 1,750 mm-hmm. square feet, mm-hmm. but none of my walls were insulated. Right. So now they are. Well, one of the other things, and Timmy uh, taught me this years ago, is that if you get a unit that is sized even a little bit too large, it won't come on enough, and it mm-hmm. won't remove enough humidity. It won't draw that air right. out. Right. So, so, uh, and you can even spend more on it and do worse air conditioning right. by putting in a larger air it's conditioning. A, it's, a, it's a science, man. You know, and all of us out there, we battle it because we always sometimes second guess ourselves. We're like, you oh, know, we're doing this right. We're doing this right. Because I mean, right. there's so many variables you got these days. And especially if people got like Oregon Louis windows. Uh-huh. I mean, that is a huge load taken off the inside of your house. Right. So you just, you got to really pay attention to it. All right. One other question. And uh, this is the, the screws to it moment. Moment. Uh, what brand gives me the most bang for my buck? And this is not an MPB thing. This is pure Timmy the AC guy. <laughs> and man, you know, I'm probably going to get slashed for this one somehow or another. Mm-hmm. My buddies of mine. I'm not a Goodman fan. Uh-huh. So whatever you do, stay away from anything that's got Goodman dogman Goodman. on it. You okay. know, they are bad when it comes to coil leaks and compressor failures and stuff like that. Build a great Goodman. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I used to be a carrier. I'm going to run through kind of all of them real quick just so yeah. everybody kind of understands. A carrier used to be my number one go-to brand, period, because right. there was a solid unit. We never had any problems with them until they switched from a Copeland scroll compressor over to an LG compressor. LG, life's good. It'll uh-huh. make your life bad real quick. That's, you know, that's a Korean-made. Yes. Um, mm. believe. And it's those aren't. I, I particularly, I'm a, a rude and ream guy. The old rectangle green units you just mm-hmm. said. Those things are still kicking. They okay. haven't changed anything other than the design of where it looks. But they've kept, they've kept the. I mean, they've integrity. modernized it. Yeah, yeah. they've in, they, the integrity is still there. They're great units. I love them to death. You know, and that's what I put in now. That's what I stand behind one hundred percent. Okay. Out of probably six hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment or so I've done over the last three or four years, I mean, I've had two warranty calls on them. Really? That speaks hugely for me. You okay. Know, yeah. Carrier. When I put those in. Mm-hmm. I could put them in a year or two later. I'm back out there working on them. Interesting. You know, and people don't like that. Now, remember, mm-hmm. this is just the opinion of AC Remedy. Yeah, this, so. is, this is but not Jason Klein. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What well, about, um, what's your opinion on uh, between a heat pump and gas heat? Heat pumps are way more efficient. Um, it takes more time to work on a heat pump. Um it depends on what you, how much you know about them, I guess. Here, we don't have just a ton of them, so we don't get to work on them a lot, so we don't keep our skills sh- as sharp as well, we me, do on Let me ask heat. you, that's based on a myth that I've heard my whole life, is that a heat pump can't handle Mississippi. Well, it can't in some in some places. So the you, northern half. You know, so right. down here, I mean, we can, we can do it. You know, we can do a heat pump. Uh-huh. You know, at northern Mississippi, not so much when it starts freezing. And then when we start getting in these super, super cold, you know, days we mm-hmm. have during the wintertime, we're talking about 20 degrees. Something right. like that. Those things ain't gonna handle too good. So that's why we put them in. You know, I hook all mine up to stage, so it runs the heat pump, uh-huh. and then the heat pump's not keeping up. It throws on the heat strips with it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So okay. then it'll sit there and go back and forth, kicking on. We've heat got strips. a heat pump at the pond, mm-hmm. and what we did, well, the previous owner, what they did, which I thought was brilliant, is they've got a propane tank down there, mm-hmm. so they just put in a little standalone furnace yep. you know in the, the den the you know the propane if, if if we're talking about natural gas and heat pump i'm a natural gas guy i love it you know right. to me it just heats good it's not as expensive when you get into propane liquid propane costs a little bit more mm-hmm. right so when you're looking at it like that if well, it also requires delivery right well and this yeah. is just auxiliary so yeah. yep. it's not anything that we're going to throw on right. all the time right. so if you if you literally have a heat pump, I mean, not a heat pump, but a gas heat, you know, and you're contemplating whether, you know, propane or natural gas is better. If you go propane, you need to go two stage in the heat. If you go, you know, natural gas, you can go single stage because it's pretty cheap. But right. if you're in a position where you have to do a heat pump, uh-huh. you can do a propane heater with a heat pump. That's what they call dual fuel. Okay. And those are pretty efficient, too. They're kind of complicated, but they're pretty efficient. Okay. All right. Um, a couple of more questions before before the end of the show. But one of these is putting the screws to Pam. What was the brand of the electric mower that Pam, the inspector, bought? Also, does she know the model number? Thanks. It. I got it. At, I'm going to go ahead and say I got okay. it at Lowe's. Okay. And they have on their uh, labels there these little things from Consumer Reports. Uh-huh. And so I went through <laughs> I just spent one afternoon over there and looked at the Consumer Report on all of them. Oh, wow. So I can't even remember what the model was. It's green. <laughs> it's green? <laughs> Remember the color? I cut my grass last night. It's green. It's green. Um, uh, I, I got a picture of it. I guess there I you can go. look. Yeah, look at but the picture. I did a little bit of research, you know, and okay. that's what I would recommend. Just, well, that's what the guy wants. He wants your well, research. Well, and then you, what you want to do is you want to, you know, I've got a small area that I'm taking care of. Right. So I don't need a monster mower. 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 Right. I was looking for something that would handle the small yard that I've got. Uh-huh. I wanted it to mulch, and I wanted it to self-propel. Huh. So, and let me tell you, it self propels. It just about kicked itself right out of my hands last night. Really? Well, they got those now. There is some of like the, the little robots that go inside your house and back yeah. in. So uh-huh. go I've seen one now. of those. Yeah. I saw one. Works makes one, and I want it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You set it up, and it goes and mows your lawn and lets you know when it's done. Yeah. And you know, it goes back to the docking goes station. Goes back to its docking station. <laughs> I would look. love to do that just to freak out my dogs. Yeah. Oh, watch my them God. chasing around. Oh, the my thing. cat yeah. would be on top of that so fast. Right. It, it, this one. 
why I can't do those things. My kids that. would be riding it around. Right. Mm-hmm. But do remember, it is storm season, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, and MSBOC and uh, Attorney General Lynn Fitch um, has said, watch out for the scams coming through. Man, Ego we're... power. Yeah. Ego That's power. what it, Ego power. That's the name of my lawnmower. Ego power. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome, Pam. <laughs> Fix It 101 is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show is produced by Mr. Java Chapman. Our call screener today was Calvin Klein for Pam Pibus and Timmy McClendon. I'm Jason Klein. Stay tuned for Wednesday 10 a.m. program, Air Day Tech with Jay White, and join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 only on MPB Think Radio. Thank you.